Audiobook Academy Biography Presents. Joseph McCarthy. Joseph McCarthy, a Republican senator from Wisconsin, claimed that the State Department was infiltrated by communists. He was elected to lead the Senate's investigative subcommittee. In the vicinity of Appleton, Wisconsin on November 14, 1908, a man named Joseph McCarthy was born. In 1946, he was elected to Tahe Senate of the United States, and in 1950, he announced that the State Department of the United States had been infiltrated by 205 communists. Seizing the opportunity of his second term, he was elected to lead the Senate's investigative committee in 1952. For the next two years, he examined numerous government agencies and interrogated hundreds of witnesses, resulting in the Red Scare. LGBT government employees were also targeted by a lavender scare that resulted in the loss of a significant number of jobs. Discredited and chastised by Congress, McCarthy faded from the public eye following his appearance on national television. On May 2, 1957, he passed away. Childhood and Profession In the vicinity of Appleton, Wisconsin on November 14, 1908, a man named Joseph McCarthy was born. McCarthy was chosen class president at Marquette University in Milwaukee, where he studied law and excelled academically. In 1935, just a few years after receiving his legal degree, McCarthy decided to run for the position of circuit judge in Wisconsin's 10th Judicial Circuit. He was elected, at the age of 30, to be the state's youngest circuit judge ever. In July 1942, McCarthy took a leave of absence and enlisted in the Marines as a first lieutenant. He would subsequently make up the story that he had been wounded in battle to cover his tracks. McCarthy was still serving in the military when he decided to run for the Republican nomination for the United States Senate. Despite his setback, he began making preparations for the 1946 Senate election immediately. Senate of the United States of America. In 1946, McCarthy defeated Senator Robert M. La Follette Jr. in an upset and became the youngest senator in the history of the United States. McCarthy was a staunch conservative who worked on topics such as housing reform and sugar rationing without drawing attention. In the wake of high-profile espionage convictions in 1950, it was feared that communists had penetrated the U.S. government. Even though McCarthy's political career had been uneventful and he was hoping to win re-election, he claimed to have the names of 57 State Department communists, even though he had no knowledge of overseas spies. The Red Scare began as he announced his charges and called for an extensive probe. Red Scare Re-elected in 1952, McCarthy served as head of the Senate's Committee on Government Operations, where he conducted anti-communist investigations and interrogated suspected government personnel for two years before stepping down. Senate Foreign Relations Committee hearing prompted McCarthy's accusations, but he couldn't back them up against a single federal official. However, McCarthy's popularity continued to climb despite this defeat, as his charges had struck a chord with an American public weary of the Korean War and anxious about communist activity in China and Eastern Europe no matter how weak his evidence, McCarthy continued to ramp up the rhetoric and portray himself as a steadfast patriot and defender of the American ideal. In contrast, McCarthy's opponents said that he used his influence to abuse his authority and trample on the civil liberties of communists, intellectuals, and artists. McCarthyism was coined as a result of his aggressive actions, which resulted in the persecution and loss of employment of countless innocent people. Fear of Lavender To counter communist infiltration, Senator McCarthy turned his attention to members of the LGBT community, arguing that they could be blackmailed into divulging national secrets by the adversary because of their sexual orientation. The Senator's Republican supporters, the Senate minority at the time, compiled a special study in 1950 that listed gay and lesbian employees as a potential moral threat to the government's operations. In 1953, President Dwight D. Eisenhower signed Executive Order 10450, approving the practice of searching down and dismissing gay and lesbian government employees for reasons of sexual perversion. As a result of this fear of retaliation, a large number of employees were terminated or quit their jobs and a variety of surveillance methods were implemented in an effort to learn more about the private routines of residents. In 1961, a gay mapping official and astronomer named Frank Comini Ph.D., who had been sacked from his work for being gay, filed a historic Supreme Court petition, which the court denied, and years later organized a protest in front of the White House. President Bill Clinton officially overturned the restriction on federal agencies hiring LGBT staff after decades of resistance. Hearing in 1954, a nationally televised, 36-day hearing showed clearly to the nation that McCarthy was overstepping his authority and any ideas of common sense after McCarthy's claims of communism and anti-American behavior affected more and more important people, including President Eisenhower. When Joseph Nye Welch, 
the Army's special counsel for the military, asked McCarthy, Have you no sense of decency sir? Has your lack of politeness gone unnoticed? A damning feature on Edward R. Murrow's television show See It Now had already swayed public opinion against McCarthy prior to the hearing. Recent years and death. As a result of his actions, McCarthy lost his chairmanship in the Senate and was later excommunicated on the Senate floor, on December 2, 1954. As a result, McCarthyism came to an end and Joseph McCarthy himself faded from public view, even though he was still serving as a member of the House of Representatives. Arthur Miller's 1953 play based on the Salem witch trials of the 17th century, The Crucible, was inspired by a highly unsettling movement led by a demagogue. After he was ousted from public office, McCarthy developed alcoholism, which he had already struggled with. At the Bethesda Naval Hospital outside Washington, McCarthy died on May 2, 1957, from acute hepatitis. His wife, Jean Kerr, was by his side. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this, see you in next video.